This is the story of British Airways Flight 2156. On the 26th of September 2009, a British Airways 777 was on the ground at Robert L. Bradshaw Airport in St. Kitts. The plane was to fly from Robert L. Bradshaw to VC Bird International Airport in Antigua. The British Airways 777 was parked at a 45 degree angle to the terminal. This might seem unusual, but it was done so that the plane could use its own power to taxi away from the terminal, as no pushback tug was available. This was the first time either pilot had operated from here, and they were unfamiliar with the airport. As they were prepping to taxi, they pulled up performance data to calculate takeoff parameters. Robert L. Bradshaw Airport has a single runway. They'd be taking off from runway 07. But they knew that they did not need the entire runway for the takeoff run. They decided to start their takeoff roll from the point where taxiway Alpha joined the runway. This meant that they wouldn't have to backtrack down the runway for a full-length departure. This was 100% allowed. Their systems confirmed that they'd have more than enough runway, even if they started their takeoff roll from the Alpha position. After this, they briefed their departure and arrival into VC Bird International. The first officer felt that the airport charts at Robert Bradshaw International lacked clarity and information, but it was a small airport, so they'd be fine. The first officer took the plane into a right turn and began following a yellow taxiway line. As they reached the intersection, they held short of the runway. During this time, the captain completed the before takeoff checklist. They also had to wait a bit because the cabin was not secure. After that was sorted out, they took the 777 onto the runway and lined up. On this flight, in the cabin was a British Airways station engineer and a British Airways airport duty manager. They were seated on the right-hand side of the plane. From their windows, they could see the runway stretched out in front of them. While the plane taxied, they noticed that they were on taxiway Bravo and figured that the plane would make a left turn and taxi down the runway and then line up. However, when the plane did the opposite, and took a right turn to line up with the runway, they were shocked, and they had good reason. The plane was at intersection Bravo, and intersection Alpha, their planned departure point, was all the way back here. The length of runway available at intersection Bravo was significantly less than intersection Alpha. From intersection Alpha, you'd have about 1,915 meters, or 60 to 100 feet of runway. From intersection Bravo, however, you'd have about 1,200 meters or 3,900 feet of runway. In the cockpit, they sensed that something was off. The captain stated that the runway looked very short and asked the first officer to stand on the brakes while applying takeoff power. In the cabin, the station engineer and the airport duty manager knew exactly what was wrong. The station engineer ran up to the cabin manager at the front of the plane. He told her that he needed to contact the flight crew immediately as they were in the wrong position. But before anything could be done, the station engineer heard the engine spool up. He got into an empty seat in row four and buckled in. This plane was going, whether he liked it or not. In the cockpit, the crew watched the speed climb. They hit 80 knots. The first officer felt that the plane was accelerating slower than usual. The plane was already at the touchdown markers at the other end of the runway. As soon as they had enough speed, they lifted off, and not a moment too soon. Just to put things in context, they lifted off about 1,000 feet from the end of the runway. At takeoff speeds, they would have gone through that amount of runway in about 5 to 6 seconds. A triple seven going full throttle over the end of a runway? It's not a good thing. But to understand how this happened, we need to look at the charts that the pilots were using. It'll give us a bird's eye view of what happened. The first page gives us an overview of the airport. Here you can see the old apron and the terminal. That's where they were parked. An apron is where planes are parked, by the way. You can see a new apron far away from the terminal. And then we have taxiways Alpha, Bravo, and Charlie, and the runway itself. Here's the second page. This shows up a close-up view of the old apron. This is where they were parked. Right behind that, the chart shows a yellow line which denoted taxiway Bravo. At airports around the world, they have yellow lines on the ground. Pilots follow these lines to get around. Hopping into the simulator, we see that the plane is parked here, and right behind it, 
just as the chart says, there's Taxiway Bravo. Following this taxiway takes us to Intersection Bravo. This is where they took off from. On the next page, we have a zoomed in view of the new apron, and like before, behind it, we have a taxiway. This is Taxiway Alpha. Hopping into the simulator again, the plane is parked here, and the new apron is all the way over here. Behind the apron, we find Taxiway Alpha. Following this taxiway, we get to intersection point Alpha. This is where they should have taken off from. Somehow, they ended up at intersection Bravo, which was further down the runway than intersection Alpha. When they started, there were no markings on the apron to guide the plane to the taxiway. The first officer saw the taxiway Bravo line off to his side and assumed that that was taxiway Alpha. Making matters worse, the crew had not done a taxiway briefing. During a taxiway briefing, the crew go over how to get to the runway. This is usually done at large airports, but since this was a small airport, they did not do the taxiway briefing. So the first officer followed the yellow line that he saw off to his right, believing it to be taxiway Alpha. The correct taxi path required them to veer away from taxiway Bravo and on to taxiway Alpha. That was a problem. To understand why, I want you to think back to the charts that we went over. The charts were not clear. The first page showed Taxiway Bravo and not Taxiway Alpha. The second page showed Taxiway Alpha and not Bravo. It did not tell you where you had to turn to get to Taxiway Alpha from Bravo. Actually, they did have another chart called the ECIAP that showed this intersection. But on the ground at the airport, this intersection did not exist. So, there was no physical yellow line connecting Taxiway Alpha and Bravo, where there should have been. Had there been an interconnection, it might have made the first officer double-check the taxi route, as he'd be unsure of which route to take. Due to this confusion, the 777 was on its way to the wrong intersection. On their way there, they held short of the runway for a while, while the cabin crew secured the cabin. Usually, airports have signs that denote taxiways and holding points. It's a way for pilots to figure out where they are on the surface of the airport. Think of them like the signs you see on the road. But this airport did not have those signs. This was a violation of ICAO standards. Had there been taxiway or holding point signs, the pilots would have looked out and realized that they were at the wrong point. The really concerning thing is that this was not a one-off occurrence. Pilots who were unfamiliar with the airport often made this very mistake. It appears that the bad mix of charts, bad markings, and lack of signage had struck more than once. There is one final factor to this incident, air traffic control. A particular exchange caught the investigator's eye. As the plane lined up with Taxiway Bravo, the trainee controller asked, do you not request backtrack runway 07? Because the controller expected the plane to backtrack down the runway and then line up. The crew replied with, negative, we are good to go from position alpha. The trainee controller did not challenge this. The trainee controller probably lacked the confidence to challenge the crew. After this, the trainee controller turned to their supervisor. The supervisor was puzzled as well. The supervisor had seen tons of planes take off from the Bravo intersection, but never a 777. And the supervisor assumed that the crew knew what they were doing. It is interesting to note that both the trainee and the supervisor had experiences where pilots mistook intersection Bravo for intersection Alpha, but none of them spoke up. As a result of this misunderstanding, they updated the charts to warn pilots about mistaking taxiway Bravo for taxiway Alpha and that taxi lines might not be consistent with the diagrams that they had. The airport also decided to add signage to bring it up with ICAO standards. The controllers were given more training so that they'd warn other crews if they made the same mistake. Flight 2516 had a very narrow escape. Do you think that this would have ended in disaster had things been slightly different? What if the plane had been a bit heavier? Or what if the winds were different? I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. Thank you for watching this episode of Mini Air Crash Investigation. If you like the videos that I make, do consider liking and subscribing. It will really help the channel grow. 
I will catch you guys next time. Stay safe.